the Jesse Miller Show. Um, so now, the bridge between camera operation features and what we're going to call accessories is what do you do with the what do you do with the footage once you've actually captured it? How are you going to edit this stuff? Um, there are a couple of programs out there that help you do this. One of them is called MPEG Stream Clip, which Andy uh, kind of turned me on to, which does a quick conversion. The camera records in H.264. All right, that's an MPEG-4 format, but it's not really good for playback. It's not really good for, excuse me, it's really good for playback. It's not really good for editing, right? What's good for editing is .MOVs, QuickTimes, these kinds of things. So MPEG Stream Clip, that's a, is that a free program? Or we pay? That's a free program that you can download and sort of uh, make it happen. Midtown Video has been doing a, a different route. It's a little bit more direct. So we plug the USB cable from the camera to the computer, yeah, to make the connection and transfer your footage. Immediately upon plugging it in, your EOS, Canon software opens up and allows you to transfer the data to a folder you want. At this point, it's very important to be organized. I highly recommend you know, doing a per project folder, one folder for each project, even to store your raw data. All right? Once you've got your raw data stored, you can open up Final Cut Pro and import those H.264 files. Now remember, H.264, for some reason, um, is great for playback, really bad for editing. But in Final Cut, once you've imported to your bin the H.264s, you can highlight all of the photo, uh, all of the movie clips, go to File, Export using QuickTime Compressor, and then essentially change it into anything you like. For instance, you could change it to ProRes 422. A lot of folks are using that. We do a lot of shooting on EX3s, so we're in you know XDCAM EX codecs. So what I like to do is capture all my footage import it to Final Cut Pro, and then immediately export all of the clips to make duplicates of them in an XDCAM EX codec. Now that's really good for both playback and editing. That way I can mix my PMW EX3 footage with my Canon 7D footage on the same timeline. So again, because we're organizing all of our files you know, on a per project basis, you're going to want to make a new file in your project folder, call it 7D, folder, uh, 7D footage, and then 7D footage rendered EX, or rendered ProRes, or rendered you know, DVC Pro HD, whatever codec you want to work in. So you've got one copy in the H.264, then you export into your rendered folder, so you know the difference. You've got your H.264 files, then you've got your proper editable video files. That's very unclear. <laughs> it's hard to put that together without a computer screen to point to you. But um, if you do have questions, send us some email to jesse at midtownvideo.com or call us up. Very easy. We'll get your questions answered. We'll get you editing in no time. All right. So that moves us out of camera controls and now into accessories. This, this is my favorite part. I like to, uh, I like to, make, I like to make a lot out of a camera. Uh, my friend Gustavo, who was shooting that, that that uh, Santa's Enchanted Forest clip with us. He likes to, oh, we got a question on the internet? Uh, yes, we do. Let's hear it. Uh, they want to know what is the Can you switch rate? over to the camera? Oh, I'm so sorry. The day rate on this, uh, on this camera. The day rate on the camera, a perfectly legitimate question. Um, you know, it's different because there's so many accessories. You could have some of this, you could have some of that. Um, basically, 250 bucks a day. That's going to get you an entire complete package. Right? You could certainly reduce and just get the camera and just pay this amount, or maybe you want some super lenses and pay a little bit more, but you want to figure roughly 250 bucks, that's going to get you a complete production package for the, uh, for the Canon 7D. Cool? All right. All right, so let's get back to accessories, the fun part, right? Um, some, some folks have complained it's tough to get a manual focus. Well, uh, let, let me back up. My friend Gustavo Acosta, who walked through Santa's Enchanted Forest with me shooting, he had nothing on this camera. He just wanted the camera, and that was it. Wanted to walk around. That's, that's great. The, it does lend itself well to sort of incognito recording. You can sneak into a spot and say, oh, I'm just going to take a photo, and, and really get away with some stuff, because they did not want us shooting video in there. Um, but I, I'm on the other extreme. I like to be in a studio atmosphere. I like to have an AC with a follow focus. I like to really you know, add a lot of stuff to my camera. So there are a few things that you can add to it. In the video I mentioned, not the best for recording audio. In fact, if you're using the built-in microphone, you're only recording in mono. However, if you pop into the line input of the camera, you do get to record stereo audio. So there are a couple of ways you could do this. You could have a stereo audio wireless receiver. So you got two transmitters, two channels, and you're good. Or you could have one of these guys. Uh, this is a Zoom audio. I've seen a couple other used, but um, Andy likes this one. My buddy Chad Tingle, who I've seen shoot with the 5D, he really likes this Zoom. Uh, it, it's got built-in microphone that is awesome, 
awesome audio quality. And it's also got two XLR inputs in the back, so you could actually essentially plug your wireless receivers right in here. Another important feature that the Zoom Audio gives you is headphone output. The camera does not have headphone output. So, you know, you gotta have something. You gotta either have an audio guy with a bag walking around following you and you're plugged in, or you can plug a headphone output into the Zoom camera so that you're listening to your mics coming in. And you'll just have to trust that your connection is good between the camera and the, the recorder. That's a little tough, but what are you gonna do? As I mentioned, a follow focus. This is really important for ACs because, um, because it's an SLR camera, right? Single lens reflex. There's no prism that sort of feeds both the eyepiece, the viewfinder, and some video output. We've just got a single lens. So it's either closed or open, right? You're either able to see here or you're able to look in a monitor. This sort of brings you back into a film style production where the AC's got no, he's got no eyeballs on the monitor. He's just uh, looking at how far away things are. So the importance of a follow focus, in this case, it allows you to put marks on and really set up your shot. You know, you do it over and over until you get it right, of course, but um, without marks on your, on your follow focus, it's gonna be really tough to pull focus manually. Um, what other accessories have we got? Well, we called up our friends at Zacuto. Scott, what's her name? Mandy? Yes. Mandy sent us, well, it's, for me it's a Hanukkah gift, but she sent us a Christmas gift and uh, the Zacuto Z Finder. This is an essential tool for seeing, you know, for seeing what you got going on. For instance, what do we have here? Maybe a three and a half inch LCD screen. When you pop this Zacuto Z Finder on and you stick your eyeball up to it, um, and I'll invite you guys to come and, and take a look when, when you have an opportunity, but you stick your eyes in here and it's like 27 inch flat panel monitor. It's, you got a cool, magnification in here, there's a little diopter so that you can really get a good focus on it depending on you know, where, where you like your eye, just like on a broadcast camera, you can, uh, you can change the level of magnification. Um, how do we mount it to the camera? This is not stock. This little piece that's here comes with the Zacuto Z Finder. What we did is peel off the adhesive, turn the camera upside down, put a little weight on this guy, right, overnight. So it's, the lens is down, the camera's here, we left some, some weight on this uh, connector piece. And that allows us to pop the Zacuto Z Finder on and off at sort of a moment's notice like that. Smartly, they give you a little neck strap because I can't tell you how many times this thing would have fallen right off and hit the floor. You know, if something hits it, you're just being a little bit careless. So you wear this around your neck, you attach it to the camera, and you've got a great way of viewing, um, magnifying this monitor. So it helps with your critical focus elements. That's really cool. <laughs> 